Hello, taking a break from my Buffy the Vampire Slayer marathon to bring you 1.4. Rewriting equations and formulas. Alrighty, let's do this. An equation that has two or more variables is called... Anyone? 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 Literal. A literal equation. I'm sorry, no one got it. To rewrite a literal equation, you solve for one variable in terms of the others. That is terrible writing, and I hope that you can say that this says the others. Uh, even, you know, I'm going to say it because I, I can't even read that. It looks like it says the O dot backwards L and then the abbreviation for hours, like HRS or something. I don't know. Example one. Um, this is where we get into like some, some really good algebra and manipulation. When you're not using numbers so much and you're manipulating equations um, with variables, that's, that's when you get some really, really cool patterns and, and, and math. So I want to take this equation right here and I want to solve for y. What it means when it says solve for y is that I want y to be all by itself and I want everything else to be on the other side. So I want something that says y equals and then some other gibberish. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, if I have 2y plus 5x equals 6, how do I get the y completely by itself? Well, I basically just want all terms that don't have y's in them to go on the other side. And in this case, 2y obviously has a y, 5x does not. So 5x gets shunned, and we want to move it, so we do a little minus 5 action, and that's going to take it out over there. But I have to keep things balanced, so eh, it shows up on the other side. So now I have 2y equals 6 minus 5x, which is fantastic. However, it's not fully completed because I don't have y equals. I have 2y equals. So I still do have to get rid of that multiplication by dividing. Divide by 2 and here is something very, very important. You might be asking yourself, do I just divide 6 by 2? Do I just divide 5x by 2? You divide everything by 2. So the y is left by itself, which is exactly what we wanted. And over here, you get 6 divided by 2 is 3, minus 5x divided by 2, which I don't even feel like doing. 5x over 2. If it's not a number that goes in easily, I know I've said this before, you don't have to worry about getting a decimal approximation. The improper fraction is perfectly fine. Or if you wanted to write this instead of 5x over 2, and you wanted to instead write it as 5 over 2 times x, that's fine as well. These two things mean the same thing, and they're both um, correct. Example 2, rewriting a formula. This is some good stuff, because there are no numbers, it's all symbolic. I want the formula for surface area to be rewritten in terms of the slant height. All right, so let's talk about this formula. The formula for the surface area, S, so S is surface area, of a specific cone. All right, so this is a pretty complicated, but not too bad type of equation. It's pi r squared, which we all know is the area of a circle, plus pi r l and we're told after that l is slant height now if not that this is particularly important um, but we're looking at a cone and there's a specific radius down here there's a specific height of the cone slant height is this this distance the height along <laughs> the slant um, so what I'm trying to do is rewrite the formula in terms of L, the slant height, which means that I want L to be by itself. So let's start off. S equals pi r squared plus pi r L. And I want all the terms that don't have L's to be on the other side. I don't need them. I don't want them. So that actually immediately makes things a lot less complicated because this term, pi r squared, doesn't have any l's in it. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract pi r 
squared. And yes, I can subtract the whole thing because the whole thing is one term. All right, because they're multiplying all those pieces together, they formed it into one term. And I have to do it to both sides in order to keep things balanced. So on the left side now it says s minus pi r squared. And on the right side, all I have left is pi r l. Alrighty, so now what I need to do is get that L to be completely alone, because I don't want pi R L equals, I just want L equals. So inverse operation, L is being multiplied by pi R, so let's divide by pi R. I could take it in two different steps and divide by pi on both sides and then divide by R on both sides, or I could just do them both at the same time, which personally, I think is just quicker. And remember, we have to divide everything by pi r. Not just the s, not just the pi r squared, everything. So over here, exactly what we wanted. The L is by itself. The L is by itself. What? The L is by itself. Um, and then over here, we need to do some division. Can I divide s by pi over r? Not really. Um, I don't necessarily know what s is. I don't really know what r is. So I have to kind of leave it, s over pi r. Now, can I divide pi r squared by pi r? I can. Pi over pi makes them go away, because pi divided by pi is 1. But r squared over r leaves me with just r. Because there's two of these r's multiplying up top, there's only one of the r's multiplying down here. So 2 over 1. That one, uh, the one on the top wins. All right, so s over pi r minus r equals solenoid. Very, very good. Let's take a look. What do we got next? Ah, temperature conversion. Nice. I want to rewrite the temperature formula so that instead of saying Celsius equals 5 ninths Fahrenheit minus 32, it now says something about Fahrenheit equals so much Celsius. Alrighty, how is it that we're going to go about doing something like this? Let's start off with the original equation. What color should I use? I'm going to use red. Start off with the original equation, 5 over 9, and then it's Fahrenheit minus 32, and that's all equal to Celsius. So what I want is the F to be by itself instead of the, uh, the uh, C. So I have all the things on this side of the equation being multiplied by 5 over 9. How do I undo the multiplication of 5 over 9? Well, I would divide by 5 over 9. But that's a little bit complicated. What's, what's division of a fraction very much like? It's exactly the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. Reciprocal of 5 over 9 is 9 over 5, so I'm going to go ahead and start this, kick this thing off, multiplying by 9 over 5. Sounds like a plan, right? So, that leaves me with 9 fifths C equals F minus 32. Good, 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 good. Looking good. I'm almost there. This thing looked a lot more complicated, and really, after one step, I'm already almost there. Now all I have to do is get the F completely alone, which means I'm going to add 32. I'm going to add 32 to keep it balanced and all good, which means 9 fifths C plus 32 equals F. Who'd have thunk it? I got the F completely by itself. It really wasn't that difficult, even though there was a messy fraction in there, which everyone cried about. It's all going to be fine. Last one. What is what has the greater temperature? Hmm. Interesting. What has the greater temperature? Eleven thousand Fahrenheit or thirty thousand Celsius? Interesting. Interesting. Well, you know what? I think we're gonna leave this one up to you because we just did some conversion up here where we have two formulas that relate Celsius and Fahrenheit. So I feel like anything that I'm going to do here is a little redundant. 
And as long as you understand what I did up up top, you should be able to do this one. Take example four and do that one on your own. I'm gonna I'm gonna check in with everybody on this one, and uh, and see how it went. If you have questions about any of the other parts, um, please write them down. Write them down. Write them down. And uh, we will talk about them next time. Good luck. Do the assigned uh, assigned exercises, and I'll see you next time.